What's up, everybody? We're back here on the Roto Grinders NFL Food for Thought podcast. I'm Justin Carlucci, aka the Luch, and I'm with my man, my co host, my wingman, the chief himself from the prop shop, Will Priester. What's up, buddy? Good to see you again. It was awesome recording the uh, NBA Morning Grind with you for Monday, and we're back here to talk some football. Listen, always a good chance to uh, hang out yet again. Hopefully we'll be able to hang out at our annual. Uh, and I think we can start talking about it now. We haven't, you know, completely, um, you know, we haven't completely got an announcement, but I'm thinking we're going to have our annual Super Bowl, Super Bowl uh, shindig in Nashville with the company, which is something I always look forward to because you get to see everyone <laughs> that you don't get to see all the time. So you get to hang, hang out with my, uh, my, my bros. So should be, should be very fun that would be fun maybe we can do some kind of live pod you know if we're together maybe we could uh, hit up the studio or something down there and uh, see what we could throw together the good thing about dfs is there's always some kind of action there's always some sports to talk about that's in our wheelhouse especially in the prop world that you're living in too so yeah uh, we'll see the holidays are here and uh, i hope you most of you have gotten at least some of your shopping done maybe we'll have a little story time towards the end of the show and give you a gpp food of the day as well but let's uh talk about the elephant in the room segment here and some big takeaways from week 14 in the nfl and uh, there's always a hundred storylines so i will throw it over to you first what is one of your biggest elephants in the room, whether it's fantasy related or just real life X's and O's NFL analysis here? Well, I mean, I, I've talked about this and look, I will always own when I'm wrong. And I said that I want to go back to this very briefly because okay? this is going to be brief, but I was wrong about the chiefs. <laughs> they, uh, they have kicked it in the high gear and they're, they're, they're rolling in arrowhead. And uh, they're on the road against the Chargers on Thursday. So we'll see. That is a short week. We'll see how it goes. But um, I was definitely wrong. I didn't think the Chiefs were going to make the playoffs the way they were looking. And also the way other teams were playing in their division. And then the other teams in their division just decided to just make a 180 and walk away from winning football. And the Chiefs, you know, turned this thing around. And that's what happens when you have a mixed talent and, you know, you figure some things out. So definitely wrong about that. I, I will, uh, you know, this isn't a guy that, You'll probably hear us talk about a lot, but Dan Orlovsky got got to give give a shout out to Dan Orlovsky. Dan, if you're listening to the podcast, sir, you've been right all along. We're just living in your world. Dan's been telling us the Patriots were going to, we're going to get into the playoffs since they were under 500 said they were the team to beat in the conference and everybody laughed at him. Not me. I was not laughing, but everyone laughed at good, good. Our good friend, Dan Orlovsky, and don't look now, folks, but the Patriots are about to run this thing out. Uh, they are running this division. Buffalo Bills may not stand a chance at this point. Uh, look, looking like the Patriots going to be the number one seed. I, I don't think anybody wants to go to Foxborough and, and play. And, and, and they're going to get a bye. I don't think anyone wants to go to Foxborough dur- during playoff season. Cold. Bill Belichick gets extra time to scheme up for you because he's going to get that by. Um, I, I just, oof, they get a chance to rest up, get some bodies, you know, healed up. Just, just interesting stuff, man. So at any rate, I did want to mention that the Patriots, I mean, I, I think here's the deal with the Patriots and maybe we can have this brief discussion discussion. It's been Brady versus Belichick double B's since Brady left and went to the new B, which is the Buccaneers. I think what what Belichick has shown us this year is it was actually a combination of both. It was a marriage made in heaven, right? You get Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, you put those guys together, and they just had a, a sustainability of championship football. You look at the Buccaneers and what Brady's brought to that team, championship football they got themselves a quarterback in new england and i I definitely think josh mcdaniels had something to do with 
development and, and you know the progression of winning. Don't get me wrong. He's he's absolutely had his hand in, in the pot. But Belichick is the head coach, so he's going to get most of the credit. And we've seen this year what can happen when they're able to play complementary, competent football. Defense is back, mostly healthy, right? Last year, defense was out. They just couldn't, you know, get it together. This year, most of the defense is back, mostly healthy, competent quarterbacks, you know, not, not turning the ball over a lot. And voila, number one in the conference. Defense. In, in their division, excuse me, in their division, sorry. Just incredible, really. I, I don't think we, we've talked enough about the Patriots this season and what Bill Belichick has been able to do. Went out and got – and, man, I'm talking a lot, sorry. But went out and got this handful of talent, right? It looked like it was going to be two superstar tight ends and everybody else. And lo and behold, Kendrick Bourne has been reborn. Uh, you know, they've got – um. Gosh, what's the guy that, that catches all the passes? Finally caught his first touchdown. Jacoby Myers. Yeah, Jacoby Myers has been a staple of the offense. Nikhil Harry is basically non-existent. That's okay. Right? You bring in Nelson Aguilar. Right. You pay, and that's what I'm saying. You, you, you maybe overpay, but you get what you want in getting two quality tight ends when yeah. they're both healthy to fit your scheme. Yeah, and you know what? They did just enough to make Mac Jones more than a game manager, uh, capable of being more than a game manager in his rookie season. He's quite efficient. The defense is fantastic. I don't know what podcast it was, but I for sure certainly said earlier in the season before this run that New England was going to get into the playoffs and win a game. I don't know which podcast it was, uh, but it's looking fairly likely that at least one of those outcomes are definitely going to happen so yeah yeah, kudos to new england and i bet you tom brady's thinking wow i wish you know of course he's gone now and things things are different on the books but if you would have put that cast around tom brady we'd be having who knows who knows who knows but fantastic job by mac jones i'm not taking away from from that and let let, let, let me say this uh luch this is how you know that organization is about winning OK, this this is how, you know, for sure. So they're in this weird weather game in Buffalo. And I think they throw the ball, what, two times that game? Might have been once. M- maybe twice. The running game, I mean, they just ran all over the Bills, literally and figuratively, Luke. Ran all over the Bills. This is this is the culture in New England. If I could be a fly on the wall in New England, there's a couple there's a couple coaches I wish I could hang out with for a season and not say anything. I just follow them, go to every coaches meeting, practice, and just take notes and learn and grow as a coach as a person. Bill Belichick is one of those people. Right. Believe it or not, Doc Rivers is another one. I know this isn't an NFL podcast, but I'm just talking. Bill Belichick, Doc Rivers. And you might be saying, Doc Rivers, he, he can't win. What, what I feel like Doc has brought was the ability to manage personalities fairly well, fairly well. But this is an NFL podcast. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it uh, oblong foot. We'll keep it ob- oblong pigskin for all you uh, coming to America fans out there. But Bill Belichick definitely is probably going to go down as the greatest NFL coach of our generation. Hands down. I'm done. Yeah, we often talk about how everything goes hand in hand from an organizational standpoint. So I think I think it has to start with the top. It starts with the general manager, the management, you know. Robert Kraft has had drama surrounding him for sure, but, um, you know, does his best to put the best product on the field to whatever capacity he's involved. And that's pretty objective. Otherwise he wouldn't be there with the, with the culture that, that has been branded, you know, the, the win, you know, they're almost like the Yankees of the NFL, New England in a, in, in a way, in a sense, such strong tradition, the highest of expectations, you make one error in a game, you're on the bench for multiple games and maybe cut, you know, like yeah. it's a, it's a cutthroat 
uh, you know, but you've seen the coaching tree of Bill Belichick uh, expand. And of course, you know, John Robinson was there, the Titans general manager. I'm very familiar with mm-hmm. the Titan. John Robinson took over a depleted roster with Tennessee and the Titans was notched their sixth consecutive straight winning season. Talk about a culture turnaround. So, you know, and, you know and this season has been riddled with injuries. I mean, this, this has been a, this has probably been the toughest season for the Titans. You get Julio, and you've got Brown, and you've got Henry, you've got Tannehill, you've got a defense that's, you know, maybe got some unsung heroes, maybe not all the names you know, like and when, Harold Landry and, healthy, and all these guys. Scary. Right. And, but the injuries, man. I mean, and that, and that will tear an NFL team up quickly. But the culture is – you'd say what you want about Brable, and you could tell he's from the, the, the Belichick tree to some extent, you know, even though he didn't coach there, a longtime player, because his press conferences are exactly the same, you know, and it's all about the team. And, you know, that's – you know, you look from the top down with the Tennessee Titans, and I know I probably talked too much about them on this podcast, but – Hey, we got our favorite teams. Since, since you're giving me the light of day, yeah, they shattered the record for, for most bodies used in the NFL in a single season, and we still have a couple of weeks to go. Um, <laughs> and they averaged the, they averaged the least amount of players, uh, unique players used per game. Every metric, you look at it. And you know what? They still have an outside shot at this bye if New England doesn't come through. They're most likely going to win the division. So, uh, you know, all things considered, the Titans never had a fair chance to put that – you know, Julio, A.J. Brown, Henry, Ryan Tannehill offense together. But it all starts with preseason, though, Chief. Right before the season, Tannehill had COVID. Uh, so Julio Jones finally get, got back on the practice field in late August, and Tannehill was off. So there was no continuity from the beginning. It's, like, you know, it's like putting a square peg through a round hole. So yeah. to be to be nine and four and to the way that Titans defense is playing, uh, pitch the shutout without, without Bud Dupree, without David Long. They're going to get Zach Cunningham. Uh, they didn't have their uh, they didn't have Norris Jenkins or their or their third cornerback. So uh, I, I'm interested to see how the Titans respond down the stretch here. And we, we talked about it. Um, we're going to you know, I'm going to we're going to look ahead in the recipe for success. But there's Saturday football, folks. And don't look two of the biggest games of the year in the AFC are on Saturday. It's like a playoff weekend. So that'll be a lot of fun. So obviously injuries, you know, the Titans, uh, you know, they're getting it done. They're three and two without Henry and a, a whole host of others. So. It, it, I was telling a friend of mine, it's been the the most non-fun nine and four start I've ever witnessed, you know, of any of my teams. But you have to respect the way they're battling in Tennessee. So so that's fun. But that, that goes hand in hand with how about the the, the damn COVID outbreak that's happening? Um, all the players in the NFL and the NBA too. Uh it's getting ugly right now. It, it's getting ugly. Yeah. We just saw on primetime football. Jalen Ramsey, day of the game. Jalen Ramsey and Higby, uh, both out into the protocol. So, have you seen some other notable mentions of, of some other guys that are uh, whose status are are in question for the coming week, Chief? You know, a couple like uh, what's his name uh, should be coming back. Keenan Allen uh, should is expected back. The Chargers just hate. I guess that's one of my elephants in the room. We'll segue into some COVID lists, but let's, yeah, let's go. Go ahead, go ahead. But, but the Chargers handled business. Like, didn't miss a beat. Justin Herbert was excellent, Chief. Excellent. Um, handled the Giants. So, wh- where do you rank the Chargers? Like in the hierarchy of powers in the NFL? Uh, I mean, man, the the AFC. So I, I've got the schedule pulled up. I'm, I'm going to get to the standings now, but they're eight and five. Here's the deal. They, they're, uh, they've got their destiny in their hands this week, wouldn't you say? If, yeah. if, if they can beat the Chiefs at home, they're 95 and the Chiefs are 95, and I think they've got the tiebreaker. Because haven't they already beat the Chiefs once? I, I, let, me, let me make sure because I don't want to. Keep going. I'll look it up for you. I'm almost pop. Yes, they've already beat them. They beat them 30 24 on the 26th of September. So if they beat the Chiefs this week, I mean, they're number one in the, in the division. In the driver's seat. Numero uno. And, and you know what? If you're in El Division, if you're a, a home field team, you don't want to see the Chiefs as a wild card. You don't want to see the Chiefs 
as a wild card. I mean, I mean, it's it's kind of like not wanting to see LeBron in like the two or two or two or three spot. Like you know, it's like come on, leave us alone. You know, yeah, it's it, it, it's like that. So I, I I totally get it. I um, this is going to be very interesting. I, I, I this goes hand in hand. The Raiders are the punching bag of the Chiefs twice <laughs> within the past month. I'm a little conflicted between are the Chiefs actually back or are the Raiders just in such a world of hurt with everything that has been happening and Derek Carr is finally going back into the Derek Carr tier of quarterbacks. You know, you obviously, you know, with Ruggs and Waller on top of everything else, you know, obviously Waller is injured and Ruggs, you know, did what he did. Neither of them are with the team is is what I'm getting at here. Um, are, are the Chiefs back or are the Raiders just – not as good as that six and seven record they're sporting. Are you on the 50 yard? Do you need to see some more of the chiefs? I mean, they struggled in their two previous games. I mean, the Denver game didn't do anything for me. And you know, the, the game before that, when they played, um, you know, they had 40 points in their previous two combined games and then they bombed the Raiders twice. So I don't know. I, I don't know if the chiefs are back yet. I need to see some more. Oh, it's the Cowboys game. They didn't even crack 20 points against the Cowboys at home. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not buying that the Chiefs are all the way back yet. What, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I think for me, it's to me, it's not whether or not they're they're back. It's whether or not they're going to make the playoffs, right? Because, I mean, you know, in, anything can happen in the playoffs in, in the NFL. And that, that's really what, I, what I'm hinging on. Like, it's, it's kind of like you said, right? Who wants to see a wild card Chiefs team? I nobody. I mean, I look, you're gonna play who's in front of you, but if you look at the standings and just you know, just kind of cranking the standings out here, you know, what we will see. Oh, let me go back because I, I was looking at the Chiefs schedule. But right now the Patriots are nine and four, Bills seven and six. So Patriots are pretty much running that division. Chiefs are nine and four, Chargers are eight and five, Broncos are seven and six. Not not great, but you know we'll see. Chiefs have won six in a row, though. Patriots have won seven in a row. Chargers have won two in a row. You see, what I'm saying this momentum. Ravens have lost two in a row, um, and the AFC North, while we thought it was probably going to be a little bit better, it's not as good as maybe we thought, right? Um, Big Ben's a little old. The Bengals are still young. The Browns have been hurt half the season. The Raiders just lost, I mean, the Ravens, excuse me, just lost Lamar. So I'm not really scared of AFC North here. AFC South, you got the Titans and the Colts, creme de la creme. Colts are seven and six facing the Patriots. Might very well be a 500 team at the uh, at the end of this, this week or at the end of the day on Saturday, evening on Saturday, night on Saturday. And then you've got the Titans at nine and four that just keep humming along and are probably going to win this division and get into the playoffs with one of the most riddled, injured teams this season. But ever, but how about ever? Let's go ever, but there's hope. <laughs> Julio Jones came back this week. Not Derrick Henry didn't come back, and I don't think he's coming back. But, but Julio's back. Perhaps that's enough to get them out of the first round depending on who they play, right? I think if they get a first-round win this year, that's a win for this organization. They should not be 9-4, and four, but a testament to instilling a winning environment in Nashville, Tennessee. I think Thank it's fantastic. For, for your kind words. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. There were reports by Diana Rossini this weekend that Henry's ahead of schedule. And they're talking about maybe he comes back. And now I trust this organization with, with, with the management, with John Robinson, AD, Amy Adams, Strunk, and Vrabel. I go from an organization for, for – although Jeff Fisher, you know, the, the upstairs wasn't great for a while in Nashville, um, you know, between the Oilers era and, you know, yep. I, I trust them. If Derrick Henry is not ready, please do not make this guy come back. But I oh, trust yeah, their don't judgment. Do it. Don't do However – He's a freak. He's a freak, man. Like, 
there, there might not be anybody who rehabs or works as hard in the league. So if he's able to, to contribute to some capacity, it was good to see the Titans take care of business. You mentioned Julio came back. He only played about a third of the snap. So wh- why, you know, but that's wise. That's why. Correct. Correct. But for fantasy purposes, and we'll tie that in. If he's the only receiver on the field, I'm probably still not playing him because they know they're most likely going to clinch a playoff spot. And like you said, getting in at this point for them is the goal and being intact. Cause you get that defense back. And if we, you know, if the Titans, if we see the Titans get into you know wild card weekend to some capacity, then you'll see a 90% snapshot out of Julio Jones. But yeah, and, and, and picking up Dante Foreman was good. Like yeah. a little baby, a little yeah. baby Henry can get in a power run game, right? You know, you br- hey, you, he's you, not Derrick Henry, but <laughs> good enough replacement to get you what you need. You bring back Bud Dupree next week in the revenge game against Pittsburgh. It should be a good game. You get AJ Brown back against the Niners. You, have, yeah. you add Zach Cunningham. It is so nice to have a competent general manager of your favorite football team, Chief. Let, let me tell you how spoiled I am. You know, someone that sees the team needs as as some as some armchair GMs do sometimes, and uh, he goes and gets them, and that's not always the case. So, yeah. uh, and, and the basically the point we're getting across here is installing these winning traditions. And yeah, and, and, and can I can I say something too in terms of the the importance of a winning tradition? Because I want to tie this into my elephant of the week where I feel like the most important game on the NFL schedule this week is actually coming on a Thursday. I I legitimately think the Chiefs Chargers matchup on Thursday is probably the most important one on the week, in, in, in my humble opinion, because of what's at stake, Luch. Like, this, this is a chance for the Chargers to – not have a meltdown, right? We've seen this before with the Chargers where they're a really good team and then the end of the season, they just can't close out the big games, right? You win a game like this, you know, Staley and company, that could not only, that could change the next three years, the trajectory, a free agent destination wannabe all of a sudden. Yeah, because you know, when you look out in LA, who's everybody talking about? The Rams, Nobody's talking about the Los Angeles Chargers who are eight and five with the chance to win this week. And, and, and really, Luch, if they win this week, they can probably just wrap up the division. Like they could essentially wrap up the division with a win on Thursday night at home. Everybody who's been crying because they left San Diego, everybody who's been giving them a back seat to the Rams will have to look themselves in the mirror and say, you know, this is a much better football team than maybe we gave them credit for. Justin Herbert's the real deal. And and not only that, they've got homegrown talent, Luch. Not a whole lot of free agents, right? Not, not a whole lot, at least not on the offensive side of the ball. Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Now, they went out and got Jared Cook, and that's just because Antonio Gates, he just couldn't play football anymore. I mean, he would have been their tight end for the – he would have been the the Tom Brady of tight ends if he could have. He just couldn't do it. (laughs) And then Hunter Henry left, so they had to go out and get Jared Cook. But bottom line is, I mean, 8-5 is a good football team with a chance to win. Very good. Number one in the division on Thursday night, and they're at home. What an opportunity for this team. I think this is the most important game on the week, in my opinion. So is the pressure on them to win this game? No, I think it is on them. You, so you know too. why? I think Kansas City's playing with house money. Everybody's already – they've already had their rough patch of the year. They're free of that now, right? They've turned this thing around. They've won six in a row. I don't think anybody's – you know, you're not surprised when Kansas City wins, essentially, Right. I think all the pressure is on the Chargers to get it done Thursday night. It, it is uh it's good. It's a fascinating matchup too. I know we're kind of looking ahead here. Um, but in terms of strengths, you know, of each side, the, it's a fascinating matchup. 
Uh, we'll get to that in recipe for success. We'll, we'll cover that quickly because it's not on the main slate, but we can quick go over that game. But let, let, let's get let's get the Bills Buccaneers out of the way, uh, and then we can go into recipe for success and and look ahead here. The macro kind of analysis of this game ended up kind of being accurate. Of course, the Bills were way behind. Uh, their non-existent run game would have hypothetically been scripted out. And it was all Josh Allen, all Josh Allen, who's in a walking boot and is considered day to day, by the way, interesting development there. Uh, He did about as much as he could do. The bills have no run game. They haven't had a run game, but they've been so efficient and and great through the air with Allen and company. They've been able to hide that much as the chiefs have been able to hide most of that one dimensionality over the past two years. Mm Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay almost gave it away, but when push came to shove, there was Brashard Perryman in overtime. I mean, what in the world was that? Just like everyone drew up, Brashard Perryman going All the, the way, I mean, and listen, you already know that. One of the highlights of the week, that's definitely uh, just, oof. Here's, here's that was another, a dagger for the Bills, too. Dagger. Here's another problem. I know it's an offensive pass first league, but the playoffs are just a different animal. Not only can the Bills not run, but they suddenly can't stop the run. Fournette, oh. huge game. Yeah. Huge game after Damian Harris predictably plowed snow plowed through him. Yeah. That's they're getting a gashed. That's a problem. They're, they're getting gashed. That that's a big problem for, for the Bills. So um I don't know. I guess their their new flaws kind of were shown. I mean, it was Tom Brady, and well, they've got some injuries too. Like of you know, Tre'Davious um, White. Yeah, Tre'Davious White. Tre'Davious being White being out is is a big deal. Huge deal. Um, so you know, I mean, Jordan Poirier can only do so much. Yeah, <laughs> he can't, he can't yeah. do it all. Where's that uh, defensive line that was so good early in the season? Listen, no one wants to see the Bills in the playoffs either. Uh, seven to six, though. I mean, the <laughs> the, the problem is. The Bills aren't going to be at home. They're going to be on the road most of the playoffs at this rate if they get in. Crazy. Here's why. Luch. Okay, first of all, I'm not expecting the Panthers to beat to beat the Bills this week. Okay. Let me let me make that crystal clear. PJ Walker. I'm, I'm not stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. I'm so sick of what the Panthers are doing at quarterback. And PJ Walker in, PJ Walker out, Cam in, Cam out. Neither one of them gets continuity, and PJ Walker's not good enough to carry the football team. So just let him sit on the bench and let Cam keep doing his thing. I mean, and Cam has a good first drive, and then he has a bad second drive, but then they just give up, put PJ in, and then he throws an interception or gets sacked. You know what I'm saying? Like, just stop with the PJ Walker experiment. He, if Cam gets hurt, put him in. If he's not hurt, stop it, Matt Rule. Just stop it. Okay. Moving on. The Bills' worst nightmare right now are the Miami Dolphins. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't know if I can. Exactly. If the Dolphins keep winning the and the Bills – once again, I'm fully expecting the Bills to win this week, okay? But the Dolphins, ladies and gentlemen – are right on their heels. Let's look at these standings. The Bills are seven and six. The Dolphins, I'm expecting them to be seven and seven at the end of this week. I'm expecting it. And they would have won six games in a row. Well, you know, if we look at scheduling, Luch, <laughs> if we look at scheduling, and here, here's, here's the crazy part. People hate going to Miami when they when they're coming from that cold weather. And you've seen it every year with the Patriots, right? The Patriots go down there at the end of the year, having trouble breathing, can't get it together, and Miami rattles off that last win of the season. Just taking the Patriots out. Luch. I don't know if you've pulled it up yet, but listen to this schedule for the Miami Dolphins the rest of the year. They got the Jets. They're going to the Saints. Monday night football. And with this Saints team, they can beat this Saints team. Okay? Let's just put that out there. 
because they're going to play pretty good defense most of the year. They can beat the Saints team. Then they're going to Tennessee. That's a big one. That another big game. I'm, I'm still expecting Tennessee to win the division. But and then, as always, we've got the Patriots coming to Miami in January. Hear, hear me out on this. Go, you have go. Two, you have two teams. Last two games of the Miami schedule. It could be a late Christmas for Miami. What if the scenarios have already played out for both the Titans and Patriots? It is very possible that both are meaningless games. It is very possible. I think. I think I have to look at the Patriots schedule. Yeah, we'll have to look. But but the, if because, the Titans win the next three games, like they were sitting, they're done. Like, what reason do you have to play? Especially with the amount of injuries they've had. And the Patriot, the the thing, the Patriots have the tiebreaker against Tennessee. Yeah. So so the Patriots could play chess, run out a bunch of scrubs. Because they say, "Wow, maybe that the Dolphins beat us, but the you know, Buffalo the won't get in." Them and <laughs> exactly. Yes. Do, do you see what I'm saying now? Belichick could be I, the ultimate chess player. That's what I'm saying, Luch. I'm telling you right now, the Bills' worst enemy is the Miami Dolphins. It's their worst enemy and currently. It, and the Bill, look at the Bill schedule. It's not great. You have New England again, right? <laughs> Luch, if they lose to New England, let, let, let's let, let's do a little bold predictions here, which which really aren't so bold. Okay, all right. If they I, lose to of- New England, the Dolphins are getting in. I'm I, I'm telling you, if if they lose to New England, the Dolphins are in the playoffs. Other than that, the Bills should win these other games on their schedule. They should. Well, like I said, I'm not expecting them to lose to the Panthers this week. I don't think anybody is. You have the, the Dome Falcons, who are playing better. Who are playing better. I'm not expecting them to lose to the Falcons either. But what I'm talking about is the Dolphins, if they beat the Patriots, they're going to pass them in the division. Like that. <laughs> Grant's game, that, g- big picture analysis here is they're alive. The Dolphins yes. are alive. Yes. I see the Dolphins on the Titans schedule. I don't want the Dolphins. They're healthy. That line is really bad, though. You, you look at Tua's splits. Look at Tua's splits, and if you're tuning in and you have, you know, premium packages or wherever, he's amazing with a clean pocket, but he has, like, no time to throw. Get a line in front of Tua and give him another year. I, I hope they do. I, uh, I want to see what Tua's made of. So uh, if yeah. you're a Miami fan, you're, like, caution, caution – cautiously optimistic and you know what the most dangerous thing about Miami is and you kind of pointed this out is they're playing with house money buddy they're they're at the casino they already cash out their voucher they're making a run here with all the all the injuries they've dealt with too they could play spoiler for a bunch of teams the cherry on top is you're telling me we have a chance to get into no pressure there is no pressure on Flores and the Miami Dolphins and, and, and this whole team that's the scariest thing yeah, for sure. I I, I think I'm, I'm kind of rooting for the Dolphins. You can redeem your Chiefs won't make the playoffs take with the Dolphins will get in hot take. I would consider you up on the year <laughs> in my book <laughs> if they get in. Uh, so I'm, I'm with you there. One more game, and then we'll, we'll look ahead here and talk more DFS. Dak Prescott just, just is not right. But the Washington football team. I think, I think it's over. I think that was the big one. Heineke was terrible. Correct me if I'm wrong. You bench Gibson for fumbling. Did that happen? Did I read hey. that correctly? What are we doing? Like, listen, come on guys. Listen, so many crazy things happen in the league. Uh, here's what I'll say. They were already down uh, McKissick. Just try to win a game. The problem is this team has – and look, I, I like what they've been doing. Riverboat, Riverboat Ron's got to win in the ways that he can win, right? He's, he's got to win in, in those ways. It, it's been a lot of game clock management, right? A lot of dragging the game out and still winning. But when you got a team like Dallas that can just push the pedal to the metal – at some point, you've got to keep up. And uh, I didn't watch the whole game. But what I do know is this. Washington's not a bad football team, but they're not better than Dallas. 
in terms of talent. Speaking of that, Luch, Dallas is the one team that I think is overrated when it comes to what's going to happen come playoff time. Well, let me guess why. Number one is they're a dome team. If they have to go outside, I just I, I don't know. Do I have this wrong stigma of dome teams going to play in cold weather, or is it factual, in your opinion, that they just don't perform? Like, like send them outside, see what happens, right? Like, they don't want to play outside. But well, d- look, Prescott just isn't right, Chief. He's just not right since he's he, come back. Here's the thing. They're going to win this division. It, but the problem is, whatever wild card team they play is going to be better than any team in their division. Right? I mean, so so the Cardinals, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which wild card team they would end up playing, right? But essentially, when I'm looking at the standings right now, this is the NFC. Cowboys, Cardinals, Rams, Packers, oh, wow. Buccaneers. Who else is going to get in? Chief. The so, NFC playoff picture for those two wild card slots may be crazier than anything we covered for the AFC. Correct. So what I'm saying is the cow- it, the Cowboys may have to see the Rams or something. It, I mean, it, it's going to be something crazy. If you give me a, a healthy Dak, I, I think the Cowboys are on paper, injuries aside, where, in terms of talent, where do they rank in the NFL? Overall talent? Um, I mean, I, I would say they're top 16 from, from a talent perspective. Talent is what we're talking about. Yeah. From a talent perspective, I think they're top 16. Because, because when you look at talent and you say, okay, who's got probably the most talent across the board if everybody's healthy? More than likely, these are the teams you're going to come up with, right? I'm saying across the board, quarterback, wide receiver, offensive line, running backs, everything. You're probably going to come up with the Buccaneers. In in no particular order, Luch, by the way, no particular order. The Buccaneers are going to be on the list. The Rams are certainly going to be on the list if everybody's healthy, right? Um, Because, because, you know, we're thinking about Daryl Henderson, but their running back was out before the season started. And Cam Akers. Think about that. What if they have Cam and Daryl Hudson and Sony Michelle's just there? Like that's you know, and that and now if Robert Woods comes back, you got Cup, Woods, Odell, Van Jefferson, who who's serviceable, Higby. I mean, that's a scary team. Matt Stafford at quarterback, right? You got the Cardinals, who've got uh James Connor and um and uh, geez, I can't remember the other, other running back because he's been out. But either way, Kyler Murray at quarterback, Nuke Hopkins, rejuvenated A.J. Green because he's out of Cincinnati, the Swiss Army knife himself, Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk. Those aren't the names, right? Those aren't the names you think about, but they're a talented football team across the board. Cowboys, C.D., Dak, Zeke, Pollard's become the ultimate change of pace non-change of pace running back weapon, pretty much an interchangeable piece, right? Gallup. And then they've got um, uh, the tight end that came alive this season, at uh, Dalton Schultz, who's played very well. So, so they're a talented team. I agree. I agree. It, it's going to be tough sledding. And I, I think if Dak's 100%, like they're a top two uh, they're one B. If Dak's one hundred percent, I I firmly believe the Cowboys are one B, uh, but he's the not. Pro- the problem he's is, not. I think they might see the Rams, and, and the Rams. Listen, the Rams have spent money to win this year. At some point, Donald Ramsey, Von Miller, this is all going to come together. Maybe. I, I'm I'm saying. Right now, guys are out. They've still – Von Miller came midseason, right? I'm saying they've still got a few games to say, okay, what's going to work for us to finish out this season? And if they figure that out, 
they're going to cause serious problems. Schematically, they're they're great. They run the ball effectively, and they play good defense, and that's extremely important. So, interesting takes. I'm with you. I like it. You know, we we actually have four, five games that won't be on the Sunday main slate because there's one Thursday, two Saturday, one Sunday night game, and one Monday night. That's game. That's what I'm saying. That's why. That's why I've been saying this Thursday night game. I think is the biggest of the week. I think it is. And not only that, we're gonna have a main slate where unless some things really get bet up. There's no 50 point game totals in any main slate game this week. Yeah. The, yeah, only, I mean, look, the only 50 point game is the Thursday night game, as you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, if anything, if I think if anything got close to 50 points, in my opinion, in my opinion now, and it's only because of the way these two teams are kind of been playing, maybe Seattle, Los Angeles starts to get close by, by the end of the week, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I, but, I, I, but I don't see it. I think it, 48 and a half could, at, at the most. Do you, you know, since the Chiefs Chargers game is probably the most fun and maybe important game of the week, let's give a 60 second, uh, like macro perspective of this game. I'll give you mine quick. I think it's such a, a strange game with each team's strengths because the Chiefs are poor against the run, as we know, and the Chargers are a team that don't really run the ball. They rely on the pass. So I think that's very interesting. Um, and there's really not going to be a change of the philosophy. You know, they're not going to run the ball 25 times all of a sudden against Kansas City. And on the flip side, you have a team uh, in Kansas City who doesn't really run the ball. However, since Edwards Hilaire has been back, He's had many uh, total opportunities, which is encouraging to see. So maybe they will try to effectively run the ball a little bit more. And that's a huge key for them because what do the Chargers do? They play too deep, nothing over the top, and they let you run the ball. They let you run the ball, basically. I mean, they're not going to give you the game, but they're not going to bring up any help to the line of scrimmage. So I think in terms of strengths and tendencies, this is going to be a fascinating game to see who is going to be less stubborn and change just enough to kind of come away with a win here. Uh, give me yeah. a take on this Thursday game. Go for it. Yeah, I I think for me, it's can the Chargers not make the mistakes, right? And, and that's, to me, that's what it's going to take to win this game. They, they can't make the mistakes, Luke, right? Justin Herbert can't come out and throw an interception at the wrong time of the game. They can't have a fumble at the wrong time of the game. They can't, you know, they can't let the Chiefs just crank out whatever plays they want and, and move the ball down the field. They're going to have to try and stop the run some. You get what I'm saying? If they, And I'm not saying be a game manager. That's, that's also not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't run the risk of flipping this game on its head with the wrong type of momentum. You know what I mean? And I think if they do, if, if they can just play – the way they've been playing and under control, don't turn this into a, a massive shootout, right? We, we don't want, I mean, look, we want to see some fireworks, maybe some explosive plays, but, but if this is it, and, and I think this is proven, Luke, if this is a shootout, it favors the Chiefs, not the Chargers. If, if I'm Staley, I say, look, um, we got, we got to, uh, uh, Stick with the formula. Take Tyreek Hill away and make this team beat. Make them beat you. Let's take him away. I don't care if he. I don't care if he catches the pass five yards in front of us. He's not getting behind us. Stick someone. You know, safety's got to come down and pop Travis Kelsey every time. Cleanly, cleanly. As soon as he hits the, you see it going. You charge. Let him catch it and pop him. A few of those are going to pop out. You get what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, and just play disciplined football, control the penalties, no false starts at the wrong time, no offsides. You know, and, and these, these are type of conversations you, you got to have it in your players' minds because what's at stake is we, we want the division. I want to be at home with a young quarterback, right, in his first playoff game. I don't want to be on the road. So, yeah, we want to win, and I know, you know, we get, we all get paid to win, and everybody's an NFL player. Luch, answer this question for me. It's, it, it's a rhetorical one. What year is Justin Herbert at the quarterback position? You see what this guy does for me? Answer this question. It's a rhetorical one. <laughs> so am I supposed to answer it or not? Just tell me. Please. Just please. tell me. No, just tell me. Go ahead. He's year two. That's scary. scary. We don't want him. He's year two. We want him at home with the fans. 
cheering him on, right? We need to get him the playoff reps. It's a lot better to get them at home. He's got to go on the road at some point anyway, right? Because they're not, he's not going to be leading the AFC. Let's get him some playoff games at home, at least one, and then go on the road. I'm done. <laughs> Classic, I'm done. I'm done. Take this mic away from me. Although there aren't any 50-point game totals, we have some lopsided lines, which make for high team totals. So it's going to be an interesting week. The Bills are 10.5-point favorites against your Panthers. I don't have the team totals in front of me. I could do the math in my head. Roughly, you know, the Bills will be north of 26 team total-wise. You know, Miami, 8.5-point favorites against Jets. Huge favorites are the Cardinals who are going to have a short week here, but they're 14 point road favorites against Detroit. So uh, that's an extremely high team total. Of course, Dallas, who we are, well, I'm claiming Dak isn't right. Uh, maybe it's time to, to get hobbled Zeke going. 10 and a half point road favorites against the Giants. And as for the main slate, those are the big ones. Those are the big, the big lines. So there are some high team totals, despite the game totals, none of them being north of 50. <sighs> That being said, I mean, what are we looking at here? I'm going to look at some player pricing. Right now, I have FanDuel pulled up in front of me. Kyler Murray is the highest-priced quarterback. Josh Allen right behind him at 8700 Then you go from 8700 all the way down to 7700 on this slate. That is pretty nuts. So you go from Josh Allen at 87 to Lamar Jackson, who we didn't talk about. Will he play? Will he not play? Will he be effective? It's going to be integral to kind of monitor – how many full practices Lamar logs this week uh, because that's too cheap for him on, on this slate, I think. So yeah. b- big price difference here, uh, big drop off after Allen on FanDuel. Um, what do you have pulled up over there? Are you on DK or what's it looking yeah, like? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on DK. Give me, give me a second here. You're trying to get the uh, – oh, man, come on, computer. Don't do this now. <laughs> Are you trying to get the Lamar price? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, the Lamar price is, is going to, I mean, that's going to be a talking point, I'm sure, throughout the industry. You know, who's going to you know, take a gamble on Lamar? Will he be able to run? Like, how injured is he? I, I, but it's, it's not a high ankle sprain, they said, uh, when I was listening to the, everything today. Definitely not a high ankle sprain. He's 7,200. It's <laughs> pretty cheap. Pretty cheap. Pretty yeah, cheap. But, but, you know, do, do you need to risk it this week? What else like, you got on it, DK? Run some prices down for me. Matt Stafford, 7K, going against Seattle, who can't stop anybody. I mean, we saw what Davis Mills was able to do at home, and the Rams are at home. Matthew Stafford's going to have a field day on Sunday, um, you know, at at home against Seattle, uh, which is probably going to put a little pressure on Russell Russell Wilson to have to push the ball down the field, who finally cracked over 150 since coming back from that injury. Um, You know, and it was the the, – the Tyler Lockett show. I don't know when it's going to be the DK Metcalf show, right? But but that's coming. And, you know, th- those are probably going to be some of the, the main quarterbacks. You get Davis Mills again at Jacksonville at 5,400. Um, he might be okay <laughs> against Jacksonville. They don't scare me. So, you know, th- there you have it. Kyler Murray's at Detroit. That should be fun. Yeah, you want to talk about cash games. <laughs> it's probably going to be a lot of Kyler Murray uh, <laughs> on those cash lineups. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, let me, so here's something I want to see since we're on the Cardinals with that particular game. And thanks for joining us, folks. I hope you guys enjoy the fantasy combination of barbershop, combination of, you know, sports radio talk. This, this, this is the pod. This is why you come, right? You know, we, 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 want, we want to plant some nuggets there and make you think about a few things in a different way. James Conner is 6,400 this week against the Detroit Lions. And uh, what if, what if he's the, he's the main running back yet again? By the way, Odell Beckham, big play, big play. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, if they if they beat the Rams, and what's the point in rushing Edmonds back if he has a monopoly on the? Right. He's been great too, and you know, even if he doesn't have the monopoly on the backfield, I don't see Edmonds playing more than twenty twenty five percent of the snaps coming back right off the rip. So uh, I think that's a really interesting price on him. Yeah. The Cardinals will be popular across the board for sure. You know, that kind of goes without saying Uh, you have a couple of really bad teams squaring off against each other, Houston and Jacksonville. 
you remember this game from earlier in the season where, uh, I mean, it might've been opening week, was it opening week or the second week where everybody was stacking up the Jags and, you know, picking on this game. And uh, I don't know, a really low total here. What a mess the Jaguars are uh, from the top down. And and that was the first game of the season, by the way. I mean, they made Tyrod Taylor look like uh, Lamar Jackson. (laughs) Yeah, it it was bad. Uh, You know, I, it's just, is it a get right spot for James Robinson who played 66% of the snaps had like eight yards well, against the Titans? Well, it was a get right spot. The first game of the season when uh, urban Meyer outsmarted himself and gave him five carries. What an idiot. What I mean, an man, idiot. What did he do that first week? What was he thinking? What an idiot. What a, what a dumpster fire of a season and a job not well done. I don't even know what I'm, what can you say about it? What can you say about if he there's going to be riots if he sticks around for another season he has to be as good as gone he has to be Listen. he has to be you're already not putting fans in those seats you, you need to change you need to show the fans that we're cre- trying to create a positive culture here yeah. and uh, it just can't keep him around it I, I can't believe i almost feel bad for the jaguars fans as, as a titans fan i yeah i get it Free James Robinson. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. Quick, quick little, Absolutely. quick little story time is there's a our, the heavy oh, cr- favorite. Crank it up. Crank the heavy, it up. the heavy favorite in my season long league. Aside of myself, probably we we have a, a real smack talk sixteen team auction league. Uh, he he's had some head to head woes. You know when you, you score the most points or you're second or third in total points and the head to head variance that doesn't treat you well. Well, uh, my buddy's in a winning in game. He's been talking smack since the draft. He started Lamar Jackson and James Robinson on his team, who combined for zero fantasy points in the winning in game. So that's a pretty terrible beat. I, I'm wondering if any listeners had similar experiences. Ooh, um, I sure hope not. With Lamar or Robinson, I'm sure some of you have, or God, both of them together, zero points. Anyway. Um, what, what, what other games catch your attention here? I mean, anytime Atlanta's on the slate, there has to be offensive players you like to pick on them with. And, uh, George Kittle, just a monster Debo Samuel back for the Niners and getting carries. When is he going to be multi-position eligible? That's what I want to know. So <laughs> you got to have some interest in the 49ers in this spot. I think chief. Yeah. I mean, they're at home. The, the, the prop, I think the problem I have is, you know, are they going to get to a point where they have to take their foot off the gas with Atlanta? Because Atlanta's on the road. They're, they're flying across, across country, playing a little bit later. Might be slightly out of their routine, right? Slightly. Uh, you know, I've just seen these types of games where, you know, a team gets out early and they just can't, can't do it, you know? So, I, I like the Niners here. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm not as invested in them as, as you would think, but they're probably going to have some sneaky appeal. George Kittle's 7,800 on Vandal. It's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. But the target tree there is so condensed. I've said it on a podcast with Keith, who was filling in that. I wish other teams would look what Shanahan does because he schemes up ways to get the ball to his playmakers. It doesn't matter who's on the field or not. Uh, I think yes. he does an underrated job there. Like let's like let's not forget he he's dealing with Jimmy Garoppolo, and I'm I'm not trying to take shots at anybody here. I just don't think he's a very good quarterback. And the success that they've had, we're not very far removed removed from half of the Niners team retiring early. Like the whole band of defense they had, <laughs> like there were three or four integral pieces that said we're hanging it up. You know what? Kudos to those guys. Like Marshawn Lynch was saying, basically in layman's terms, take care of yourself, get the bread, take care of yourself, play till you're in your early thirties, take care of your family. You know, and that's what yeah. some of those guys did on the Niners. So talk about a like they really didn't go and take their lumps with a minor rebuild that they've had to kind of. I mean, they hit their draft picks, getting Debo, et cetera, Elijah Mitchell. Like these guys are contributing. So I don't know. What 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 is George Kittle? I'm gonna ask you that on DraftKings. I'm curious what his price is over there. I'm gonna give you a stab at it because he hasn't really been too expensive on the season most most games. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's had two really big games back to back. 27 targets across the last two weeks. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, and I, was, I, I think a lot of it has to do with Debo Samuel being hurt. Yeah. Or, or banged up. But I'm going to ask you, because I know you said he was 7,800 on, on FanDuel. Give me something. 72. Set close. 75. Yeah. I've been doing this too long. <laughs> yeah. 75 for sure. Uh, well, I, I think I'm looking, I'm trying to find snap counts here because here's an interesting nugget for you. Debo Samuel had one target. He had one target. Brandon yeah. Ayuk had 11. Yeah. So let me find snap counts and then I want to see. Yeah, keep keep talking to me. I'm going to look up some positional snap counts too. Keep talking to me, whether it's Niners or if you want to pick another game and I'll revisit this before we start wrapping yeah. up. Yeah, well, Je- Jeff Wilson had 13 carries, which is kind of how I thought that game would go, which is why I didn't want to, um, you know, really get involved. I figured Debo would get the carries, a few carries. And I said five to eight when I was on the Blitz show, and that's exactly how it went, five to eight. So, I uh, I mean, he, he had eight carries, so – I think this team, it's it's Debo, it's Ayuk, it's Kittle. That's it. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And it's kind of it's kind of nice to know where the ball's going to some capacity. Um anything on the Atlanta side here? I mean, Cordell Patterson as a player has been phenomenal. He may be a Pro Bowl. What position does he play? He's a Pro Bowl utility guy. Put him wherever you want. Any any interest on Atlanta here or not really? No, I'm not playing Atlanta this week. Not doing it. Yucky. 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 So Debo played 77% of the snaps, had one target. He lined up with 46 of those 55 snaps he played. He was out wide for 33, in the slot for 13, and he was uh, in the backfield for nine. My man was out there this could be an anomaly week where Ayuk saw the volume because if Debo was getting carries, he was fine injury wise, right? Like what, what's, what's the point of giving carries? And so uh, because, well, because they were down their best running back and he's essentially their next best running back. I, I know what I'm saying is like, I wouldn't worry about him. I wouldn't uh, see. He played a lot out wide though. That I'm going back to Debo this week. Make, make me text me on Sunday morning and say, I hope you lock Debo, you idiot, Luch, because that's what you said on Monday night, and you better not go off of what you want to do. <laughs> Shoot me that text message and, and remind me. I, I think that's an anomaly volume week that he didn't see. And uh, just I wanted to make sure he was split out wide, and he was, and he was running routes. So uh, I don't have a problem going back to Debo. Maybe you know, people will see that performance and the price and shy away from him. Uh, what other teams or games are you most likely going to target by looking at some things this week? And that's probably mostly it. I, I don't see myself. I, I'm, I'm not going to spread myself out too much this week, man. Um, so you like the Niners. You yeah. like, you like the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. You got any, like, I like the Rams Seahawks game. Remember that's kind of my, my sneaky one. Uh, and then that's it. Like Rams, it, Seahawks. This, yeah. Yeah, this this I mean, maybe I get on some Houston against Jacksonville with Davis Mills and Brandon Cooks. Like maybe that becomes a thing, um, you know, because because all those guys are going to be cheap enough for you to be able to pull it off. I can maybe get behind some Green Bay on the road with how banged up Baltimore is in the secondary. I, I can maybe get on some Devontae Adams and company, I think. Uh I don't know. I don't, I don't mind Devontae, but we're going to have to pay a pretty penny for him this week. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I mean, like, I mean we are because he's going to he's going to be essentially the number one target on the slate. I mean, I know Cooper Cup's there at nine k. Uh, Adams is eighty nine. Debo Samuel's eighty two. Those are your top three. Let me ask you this: Terry McLaurin had a concussion. If he doesn't play, do you have any interest in someone else from Washington? Fill in the void of McLaurin, Dynami Brown, DeAndre Carter. They got the Eagles. I don't. I don't know. I. It just doesn't scratch the itch for me. Yeah. If they, if they don't have McLaurin and like, uh, the whole Gibson thing. I mean, I know the Eagles have been pretty good against the run, but looking at Gibson and, and the opportunities he should have as by far the best offensive player they will have on the field. I think it's interesting spot for Gibson. Although 
the entire offense might just fall flat on its face. Uh, you know, the birds front seven is pretty good. The Eagles have a decent front seven. So, uh, you know, Gibson might have a ton of volume, but I'm a little worried about that offense uh, in general. Yeah. Hopefully McLaurin's all right though. Um, how about Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, man? Now that was a big talking point last week. They, yeah. they coexisted and uh, they played the onslaught and they played it well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to go out on a limb and say that was probably an easy one for us. They were playing Detroit. Like, you know, we already knew what was going to happen. I'm looking at some of these running back prices. I'll tell you two that are staring at me right in the face on FanDuel is Zeke at 6,700 against the Giants. And James Robinson, who we talked about, 6,300 against Houston. Yeah. Although I don't trust Urban Meyer as far as I could throw him, which is probably <laughs> which is probably <laughs> only a couple of feet. Yeah. Let me ask you about one more guy, all right? And I know you mentioned this game. Is it Richard Penny time? Uh, it could be. It could be, but, man, you know, he had a big game last week. But what does that mean? You know, I, I hate playing running back roulette with some of these coaches. Alex Collins could get took 15 carries next week. I don't think so, but who knows? Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> Alex Collins is terrible, man. I mean, he's a pro football player. Who am I? You know, there's going to be people that are saying, what do you know, Carlucci? You know, well, I don't know. Rashard Penny's the better back. I guess I should have said, I'm sorry. But it's the truth. Hopefully they give him the work. Uh, you know, he had a huge week last week. I'm excited to see, you know, if, if Penny gets the opportunity. And it'll be interesting to see how the public plays that coming off a big game. Uh, anything else, Chief, or should we get into uh, story time and GPP food of the day before we get out of here? I'm good, man. I mean, GPP food of the day is, is, is in full effect in my book. Okay. All right. You want to go first or should I go first? Well, no, no, because we talked about it pre-show. That was something you wanted to uh, you wanted to put in, put in the bag, the GPP food of the day. Yeah, let's let's get it, man. All right. It's the holiday season. Let's talk about Christmas cookies. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to mention something else, but I, I'm perfectly fine with, with no, Christmas you'll, cookies. Go ahead. Let's hear yours, too. Let's get into it. So uh, tonight, man, I made some seafood rice. And what's in that seafood rice is shrimp and crab meat. Um, you know, and you've got uh, some oregano in there, some, some garlic, of course. Uh, some old bay seasoning, pepper, a few other spices, um, you know. But but the secret is the rice, Luch. The secret is the rice. You've got to use the jasmine rice. <sighs> haven't 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 uh, got d- dug into it yet because we had the pie. But uh, that's where I'm headed after this, brother. Dig into some seafood rice, succulent shrimp, phenomenal crab meat in there gonna be a good good party in the chief's mouth after this pot i can take that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and guess what not not to uh i promise i'm not <laughs> trying to sell you anything but my good friend scotty peppers man i've still got some of this this gotham <laughs> gotham by you the louisiana boil sauce i'm probably going to throw a little bit in there and 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 and, and oof it's going to be fantastic Oh, yeah, I, I, I've been using my Gotham hot sauce as well. <laughs> oh, man. Interesting uh, choice of words, my friend, but I appreciate you nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, Christmas cookies, man. You know, uh, my girlfriend and, and the kid went over to her family's and they baked like eight trays of Christmas cookies with her family. And I just started getting back into the gym the past like six and a half weeks. Now I have to walk downstairs you know, getting a glass of water at night, letting the dog out at 1 a.m. on a cold, blistery Poconos evening and try to avoid walking back up the steps without reaching my hand in the cookie jar, as one would literally say. And uh, do you have a favorite type of of holiday uh, delicacy or any type of cookie in general? Do you, do you have an Achilles heel where if you see a certain type of cookie and you're like, all right, like I got to grab one of these. There's no way I'm getting by it. And honestly, mine are the the uh, the Dutch cookies with the big sugar crystals on top. 
in that blue tin can. <laughs> Listen, folks, I get that. And uh, it's over. I, I can go to town because, you know, they have the, they come in like these little cupcake thin pieces of paper. Like there's like a stack of three in each one. And before you know it, you've picked up four or five of those things. You just whew, such good butter cookies. So good. You know, I, I think my favorite are the uh, I think they're called peanut butter blossoms. I think they're like the doughy uh, sugary base. And they have that like uh what's that chocolate candy and then you put them there like the Hershey's hugs or the Hershey kiss, like, and you put them in the oven. So you have like the chocolate and you have the sugar base. So that's, that's kind of my weakness. So if any, if anybody has any bakeries or anything and wants to uh, drop us some samples, uh, we would gladly, uh, we'd be all for it. I mean, Hey, we, uh, we did some hot sauce uh, review action, not trying to rip off a a Portnoy thing, but uh, we are the food for thought podcast. That's what we do. So uh, shout out to all the bakers and, and everybody, you know, this time of the season, I actually uh, interviewed a couple of local bakeries chief right now. And uh, you wouldn't, you know, you think of the supply chain and the shortage crisis. Whoo, the, the bakers are, are telling me the the prices of everything you you probably would never imagine that they're having trouble getting, you know, certain types of shortening, um, et cetera. The whole nine is, is tough. So uh, keep grinding away to all the bakers and all the cooks and all the holiday chefs out there. We thank you. What's up, Chief? What's going on in the prop shop this week? Uh, big things, man. It's So here's what you got to understand about the prop shop. We're rolling all day, and especially now that we've, we've got NFL Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's loose. It's going to be getting cranked up. And we've got NBA all those days, too. Come hang out with us, folks, if you so please. All right. You got any story time and then we'll get out of here. We haven't done story time in a while. I feel like there had to have been something in your life in the past, what, two weeks, three weeks, you know, something on your mind in general. Joel Embiid got scratched tonight, by the way. How do you feel about Um, that? I mean, very disappointing, but Hey, what what can we do? It's it's, it's the NBA. Uh, I don't mind the scratch. (laughs) What I hate is the time of the scratch. You get what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I hate. It, it's just, it's just the time of the scratch, man. Um, Awful. Let's be better. NBA news. <laughs> yeah. Be better. Let's be better. I will say this story time. I'm going to shout out a guy that goes to my son's school. Uh, his name is Tariq Shabazz. I coached him in, in middle school and I'm not taking any credit. He's earned everything. You know, he's, he, he was a good player then. He's, he's a good player. He's a good player now, but check this out. Tariq is averaging the most points in the state of South Carolina in basketball. At least the last I checked, he was averaging around 31.8 points per game. 42 here, 31 there, 32 here, 28 there. Uh, the guy's a phenomenal talent. Uh, he's like he's like Damian Lillard. If, if you've seen Lillard play, he's kind of like a baby Dame, right? Got extensive range, hand down, man down. If you don't get a hand up, forget it. Luch, you know, I talked about him being like Damian Lillard. Um, and I am going to check and kind of see where his stats are. But if you guys haven't seen Tariq Shabazz play, if he's got some clips out there, check him out. Um, you know, I'm not, of course, I'm not getting anything. This isn't for any recruiters or anything like that. It's just he's a really good player that's probably a name that nobody knows. And I'm going to tell you how tall he is, Luch. He's 5'8". Wow. Now, I want you to think about that. The kid's averaging the most points per game in the state of South Carolina. He's 5'8". If he was 6'5", he'd be the number one recruit in the nation. And I'm not saying this to exaggerate. The kid's got hops. He can he can dunk. He can shoot. He can defend. Uh, he does it all. He's just 5'8". But everybody check, check him out. Tariq Shabazz. Good for him. That that's awesome. I'm definitely gonna look him up. Uh, I'm five eight two, but I'm also thirty one and stopped growing. But hopefully, and, and guess what? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at this. Let me see. I'm trying to see. I, I want to see where he's at on points right now, Luch. I, I do want to see. Okay, so his points per game have come down just a touch because they're also undefeated. By the way, haven't lost a game yet this season. Wow. 
Does he have like a huddle page or something? I'll check him out. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure he's got a huddle page. But right, yeah, cool. So now he's averaging 28.8, 2.3 assists, 4.9 rebounds, 3.9 steals per game. And they're 10 and 0. A little bit of everything. Yeah. And, and my, my, he's varsity. He's a senior. My son doesn't play varsity. He plays JV. He's in ninth grade. But uh, my point is, I mean, he's, he's, he's playing well. And, uh, you know, yeah, just check him out if you can. Hey, your your son's a good kid. Shout out to him because uh, just so the people know, uh, pre pre pod recording sometimes he comes on and asks me a couple questions about about his fantasy teams. It ignores the Chiefs input, uh, but maybe, maybe he should start listening to the Chiefs a little bit. Well, he should have listened to me this week. He's he was like, should I play Jamison Crowder or Jalen Guyton? Because he was like half his team was on the bye. So you play Jalen Guyton. I'm like, he's going to get the opportunity. <laughs> he plays Jamison Crowder. And it's like, oh, Jameson Crowder didn't do much. I said, I thought I told you to play Jalen Guyton. Kids don't listen to their parents. That's true. They're crazy uncles. You know, I'm actually uh, dubbed Uncle Looch to a couple of my friends' kids. So, uh, you know, uh, apparently I'm like the fun, you know, friend uncle, you, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, my uh, my quick story time is, and I kind of alluded to it on one of the crunch times, was – Listen, Chief, I, I don't know how you operate through the holiday season or before it, but I really thought I beat the uh, the crowd who procrastinates this weekend uh, on Saturday morning. I went out, took about a 20 minute drive outside of the Lehigh Valley. And if anybody's listening in, you know, in the area, you know where Trexler Town, Pennsylvania is, because it's just like one of those hubs where there's a Costco and then there's a Target and a Dick Sporting Goods and a couple of restaurants, you know, one of those air complex is you know the areas that just has a, a bunch of stuff and huh, boy was i wrong it seems like everybody is out as much online ordering as everyone has been doing man i went into costco didn't look to see how long the lines were looked around for about a half an hour picked up about three things i wanted and i, I went to go check out uh, the line and the line went from the registers on one side of the store to the back wall of the Costco warehouse and started wrapping around the back aisle where all the toilet paper and paper towels section was. And I, I couldn't believe it. So what did I do? I put my items back, walked through the checkout line, didn't purchase anything, got my Costco hot dog and a drink and left. So I had the most unproductive shopping trip where I thought I beat the, the crowd who does everything late. You know, I thought it would be like the next week or so. Uh, but I lost. So uh, I'm going to have to do some stuff during the weekdays, I think, so I don't lose my mind when I'm in public. <laughs> so, yes. Do you procrastinate you your when mind. you shop? What, do, you, do you chip away at your shopping? What, what do you do, uh, Santa Chief, as your, as your method of gift giving? Uh, typically, I, um, I kind of do it along and along and along. That, that's, that's typically what I do. But man, I, I wasn't able to do that this year. So, Me either, buddy. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't started... You're too late, folks, especially if you're in the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Listen, man, a great show, a lot of fun. Good talking, some X's and O's and some playoff picture stuff with you and a couple of teams we're targeting. Where can the people find you on Twitter? At Chief Justice 06. Look me up. I'm at the J Carlucci. I know we ran a little bit late this pod, but uh, I hope if you're sticking with us at this point of the season by now, hopefully you, you're into what we're saying by now. So we appreciate all of you and, uh, you know, we talked about this, uh, me and Dre talked about it last week, you know, when we heard about the Demarius Thomas news and everything when we were doing the pod together, which uh, is awful. But, you know, send that extra text to your friends and family, you know, drop by their house. Hello. You know, you never know. Make their day. You just never know. So it's the holiday season, Chief. Am I right here? One one act of kindness, you know, ex, you know, extend your reach to your friends you haven't talked to in a while. And, uh, you know, it just uh, when you know things happen, especially. Yeah, with everything going on in the world right now, uh, it, hits, it hits home. It hits home. So uh, glad to have you as my colleague here, buddy. Uh, yes, anything, sir, brother. Anything else or are we heading out? Let's head out. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. But we'll talk to you again before then. Yeah, we'll have one more show next week, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun with uh, the stuff that unravels this week in the NFL. So for the Chief, Will Priester, I am Justin Carlucci. Enjoy your week and good luck.